grab it and pull it over here. I am going to come over here, stop that music, um, close out this new tab, close out that, and hi! Um, Melina M is in the waiting room. Good morning, Melina. Let me just figure out where I put my attendance. Oh, it's over here. Um, I will start to mark people. So I believe I didn't mark you as absent yesterday um, because you were able to get that work done. Were you able to get that work done yesterday, Melina? Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. Let me let these people in. Landon and Jaden. So Jaden, Lovando, Melina, uh, Dillo. Good morning, everybody. Grab your textbooks. We're going to get started right away. And I'm going to share my screen. And you can see that. Yay. Um, I'm going to grab my participants, drag it over here. Um, I'm going to, um, in your textbook, if you wouldn't mind opening up to a lesson number 13. Um, I'm just going to grab this chat and I'm actually going to get started because I can't wait forever. Oh, actually, I have like two minutes. So I guess I'll wait a minute and then I'm going to get started. How many people were in your last meeting, guys? Did everybody come? There was like 12. That's it? Really? Yeah, not too many. That's so weird. Oh, man. Hopefully we have a better turnout today. Um, well, we'll see. Okay, so let me, um, while we're waiting, I'm just going to turn my screen a little bit. I'm going to move my camera just so that um, we're ready to party when we get started. And yes, it is going to be a party today. No, probably not, but it won't be horrible. Come on, this cord is all tangled. There we go, okay. So we're opening up to lesson number 13. I really am wondering where everybody is. Okay, I'm gonna wait another minute just because I can't, I, like, I logistically can't do this with only three people, four people. Um, <clears throat> kind of bummed. Here we go. Haley. Okay, so I am, um, I guess I'm going to start to get started. Um, let me just grab my mouse here. Claire in and Claire and Aiden. Aiden and Claire. So let's get started. So it is 1030 officially, so I'm getting started. Um, here we go. Let's take a look at what we're starting with. So today, uh, I wanted to just start, this isn't in your slideshow, but I just wanted to start by saying awesome job to everybody because we had 15 out of our 19 students, actually, um, yeah, 15 out of our 19 students fully watch all of the video from yesterday. And I said it was a very important lesson and it was. Um, I'm very proud of you guys for sticking through and watching that whole activity um, and getting that activity done in your book slash your slides. So thank you for doing that. I just wanted to acknowledge that. Um, there were a few students that didn't get it done that did not watch the video. So um, all I'm gonna say is you need to, these are like coming to class. So I'm counting watching these videos 
as coming to class because this is half of my class you're doing outside and it needs to get done. So if you're not watching these Ed Puzzle videos, you need to change your ways because it's not a new, it's not like you're practicing what we did in class. You're extending on that, what we did in class. You're learning something new in these videos. So don't just assume that it's probably an extension of what we did in, I mean, it's just a copy of what we did in class because that's not the case. It is a new learning opportunity for you. So you need to watch all of that video. There are a few friends that haven't watched all of them and it's going to really affect you guys moving forward because you're not learning half of the content, okay? So let's talk about what a systems of equations is. Okay, so today you need your workbook or the slide deck. You need a straight edge or a ruler. So some sort of ruler or like a book to use to make a straight line. And you need a scrap piece of paper and a pencil, okay? So our goals for today, we have three goals, okay? First is I can explain the solution to a systems of equations in real world context. So you're going to be given a coordinate that is a solution to a systems of equations it is going to be your job to tell me what each of those points mean in the context of the story i would say probably the most um silly mistakes that i was seeing on that quiz the other day was so many people were telling me what's the slope what's the y-intercept but you weren't telling me telling me what it means in context and that's half of the point. So you you didn't get full points on some of those questions because you weren't giving me what those points mean in context. What does it mean in the story? Okay. So then you can explain why a, what a systems of equations is, and you can make a graph to find an ordered pair that a real world situations have in common. Okay. So we're looking at our warm up in our textbook. It's called milkshakes. I'm giving you two minutes of work time right now to answer the following questions. You're not going to get through all of it, but I want you to get through as much of it as you can. Okay, so you need to first look at Lynn and Diego. Lynn starts with 12 ounces and drinks one fourth of an ounce per second. Diego starts with 20 ounces and drinks two thirds of an ounce per second. How long will it take Lynn and Diego to finish their milkshakes? You're taking two minutes to work on this question right here. If you finish early, I want you to look at number two, okay? You're taking two minutes starting now. About 15, a minute and 15 seconds left. Answering those questions of how long will it take each one of those people to finish their milkshakes. They're like having a chugging competition, by the way. Guys, I am kind of bummed about this uh, attendance today. What the heck? We're getting started. We're looking at the warm up. We're going through it in 17 seconds. So please open up your text to chapter to lesson number 13. And we're getting started in about 10 seconds going through that warm up. You need, need, need to be on time to these classes, please. 
okay? Let's take a look. So Lynn's equation was written as y is equal to negative one fourth x plus 12. She drinks one fourth of an ounce, one fourth x per second. So that rate of change is going to be one fourth, but it's going to be a negative one fourth because she is drinking it. And then we add this 12 because that's how many ounces she started with. Okay, so if we solve this for when there's going to be zero ounces left in the cup, you're going to plug zero in for y, and you're going to set it equal to negative one fourth x plus 12. Then you're going to subtract 12 from each side. Guys, we really can't be coming in late like this. It's not, it, 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 it ruins the rhythm, it wastes time. Guys, you need to come in when you're supposed to come in, please. Negative 12 is equal to negative one fourth X, right? To cancel out that negative one fourth that's attached to our X, we multiply by the reciprocal and we multiply by negative four, multiply by negative four. Negative four times negative 12 gives me 48. What is my label gonna be on that answer? 48 what? Seconds. Seconds, very good. 48 seconds. So it's gonna take Lynn 48 seconds to drink her milkshake. Now let's take a look at Diego. So Diego drinks his at two thirds, um, two thirds X, his rate is two thirds of an ounce per second. So we're going to plug zero in for Y and solve for our X. We're going to subtract 20 from each side. Okay, so we're gonna have negative 20 is equal to negative two thirds X. The way that we cancel out that negative, the way that we cancel out that negative attached to, or this, this fraction, sorry, this fraction attached to our X is by multiplying by the reciprocal three halves, multiply by three halves, negative three halves, sorry. And three times 20 gets me 60 over two. So it's gonna be equal to what? How many seconds is it gonna take Diego to drink his? 30 seconds. 30. 30, very good. That was Landon and I can't, I didn't see who that other one was. Nice job. 30 seconds. Okay. So let's get started on our activity for today. We're not gonna look at two. We're gonna just stick with this number one here, okay? So let's take a look at number two, okay? So we are passing on the trail. So we are in this text now at the bottom of that first page, activity 13.2. So we have this diagram that's gonna help us. I'm gonna come back to this after we read through the story. So the story that we have is in two paragraphs, okay? So there's a hiking trail near the town where Han and Jada live that starts at a parking lot and ends at a lake. Okay, so we're walking from a parking lot to a lake. Han and Jada both decide to hike from the parking lot to the lake and back, but they start their hikes at different times and they're gonna be walking at different rates of speed. Okay, so at the time that Han reaches the lake and starts to turn back, Jada is 0.6 miles away from the parking lot. So where, um, so if we're, if we're, so this is basically what this is saying is a friend, so Jada and Han are walking. A friend shoots both of them a text message and says, where are you at this moment in time? So that's where it starts. So at that moment in time, Jada replies back. She looks at her Fitbit and she says, I am 0.6 miles away from the pond. You can see her right here in our picture. Then when Diego, I mean, when Han replies, he says, I'm at the lake. 
I'm at the lake right now. And my equation for where I'm walking can be written as D is equal to negative 2.4 T plus 48. So we don't know how far the lake is away from the parking lot. So I want you to look at Diego's equation here. D equals negative 2.4 T plus 48. And I want you to tell me in the chat, how far away from the pond or from the parking lot is the pond? Looking at that equation, how many miles is it gonna be away? Is it gonna be this slope? Or is it going to be this y-intercept value? Nice job. Nice job, Julie. Nice job, Aiden. Nice job, Haley. The y-intercept, Brady. Nice job. So the, the, the distance from the parking lot to the lake, so the whole distance here, is going to be 4.8 miles. OK? So that's important to know from the parking lot to the lake, it's gonna be 4.8 miles, okay? So we know that, let's take a look at the questions that it's gonna ask us now, okay? So, so the lake, I'm gonna write this down. The lake is 4.8 miles from the lot, okay? And then it says, She's walking, so Jada is 0.6 miles away from the pond, from the parking lot, and hiking at a constant speed of 3.2 miles per hour. Han's distance um, in D from the parking lot can be expressed as <clears throat> D is equal to negative 2.4 T plus 4.8, where T represents the time in hours since he left the lake. So at T zero, so at zero seconds, when that friend sent that text message, where is Han? In relation to the parking lot, how far, that's okay, Jason, just try your best. Han, H-A-N, how far is Han from the parking lot? Throw it in the chat, please. I got Claire's answer. I need three more people to give me an answer. How far is Han from the parking lot? When we start this shindig. Very good. Two more people, give me some answers. How far is Han from the parking lot? Very good. A lot of people just gave me a bunch of answers. 4.8 miles. Okay, good. How far is Jada from the parking lot? Throw that in the chat. How far is Jada from the parking lot? Use this story to help you out. From the parking lot, not the lake though, Molina. Nice job, fantastic job, everybody. You're doing great with this. I'm so proud of you. You're doing fantastic. She is 0.6 miles from the parking lot. Fantastic job, every single one of you. I am so proud. Keep it up, okay? For a time shortly after O, is D decreasing or increasing for Han? So think about it this way. Is Han, as he starts to move forward, is he getting closer to the parking lot or is he getting further away from the parking lot? Think about his rate of speed and think about where it says what he said, what it says he's doing. He's getting nice job, Eric. Is Eric, as he's, is Han, as he's walking, getting closer to the parking lot or further from the parking lot? Couple more people put it in the chat. Brady, what do you think? Um, Melina, what do you think? Um, Haley, nice job. Um, Dylan, what do you think? 
Wonderful job. Thank you for giving me answers, guys. Fantastic job. So if we're talking and we look back at this picture here, we have Han, he's at the lake. As he starts to add time, as the time goes on, he's walking back to the parking lot. So he is getting closer to the parking lot here, okay? Because he's at the lake, he's trying to come back. So he's gonna come closer to the parking lot, okay? So I just want you to sort of understand what's happening here. So his D is going to be decreasing because he's coming towards the parking lot. He is coming toward Now, what let's think about Jada. As Jada's walking, is she getting further from the parking lot or closer to the parking lot? Think back to our diagram here. If she starts, this is where she starts, right? She starts here. As she's walking, is she getting further from the parking lot or closer to the parking lot? Think about it logically. She's walking on this path. She's trying to get to the lake. Is she getting further or closer to the parking lot? Nice job, Julia. Nice job, Haley. Claire, Melina, take a second, look at that. Okay, yes, she's walking towards the lake, which is logically further from the parking lot, okay? We're just talking about logic here, okay? And I'm not saying that if you didn't get it, you're not logical. I'm just, we're talking about it so that we can understand what this is um, asking before we start with the math, okay? So she is increasing because she's walking away from the lot, okay? So what I want you to do in your textbook right now is I want, I want us to write an equation for Jada's distance from the parking lot as she heads towards the lake. What do I always start with when I'm writing an equation? Nice job, Eric. Nice job, Julia. Nice job, Haley. Y is equal to, okay? So Y equals, and then I need to think about y equals mx plus b. We have our slope. We have our y-intercepts. What is my slope of this line? What is Jada's constant rate of speed? Think about that sign. Claire, why are you saying it's going to be a negative 3.2? She's walking towards the lake, so she's getting further away, so she's getting further up, right? So it's not going to be a negative 3.2. It's going to be a 3.2x, and then what is my y-intercept here? What is the distance that she starts at? What is my y-intercept, the distance that we start at? Nice job, ladies and gentlemen. She's starting at a positive 0.6 because she's a positive um, distance of 0.2, I mean 0.6 from that lake, or from that parking lot. Very good. Very, very, very good. I know that this is challenging. You guys are doing great with it. So please copy down in your textbook this equation because we're gonna be graphing these two equations right now. Okay? So I'm going to flip onto my document camera and I'm gonna be writing in my book alongside you. If you're on the slides, we're on slide number 11, okay? So let me just switch to my doc camera. I don't know why I'm yelling today. Oh gosh, it's like a terrible habit. Okay, so I am looking at my document camera. Here we go. Um, I can still see the chat, so please be putting things in there if you have questions or answers to my questions. Let's take a look at this guy right here, okay? 
So let me just sort of get myself all situated. Okay, so we have our equation for, this is for our Jada. Can someone in the chat tell me what is the equation for Lin again? Or for D, um, Han again, I'm sorry. What was Han's equation? Look up top if you need to remember back to it. D equals negative 2.4 plus 4.8. Plus uh, 4.8, very good. So my suggestion to you is you write both of these equations down. So I changed my variables to y and x just so that when I go to graph them, it's a little bit easier, okay? So in your text, I would write this down and then let's take a look at creating this graph together, okay? So I just have to sort of fold my book a bit. Just give me one second. Okay, so we're in our textbook and it tells us to draw both graphs, one representing Han's equation and one representing Jada's equation. It is important to be very precise, be careful, work in pencil and use a ruler. So let me switch to my pencil here. We have our equations y is equal to 3.2x plus 0.6. y is equal to negative 2.4x plus 4.8. So what I want you to do is I'm going to give you two minutes right now to graph these equations. Remembering that when we graph, the first thing that we do is we plot our y-intercepts. Okay, so first thing you do is you plot your y intercepts and then you use your slope to extend your line. When you look at um, Han's equation, what direction is he going to be moving? Is he going to be moving down or is he going to be moving up? Is he negative or positive? Looking at Han's equation. A couple more people put it in the chat. Look at his, his rate of change though, Eric. His rate of change is negative 2.4. So what I want you to do is now I want you to graph these equations. Please make sure that you are graphing them in pencil and we are going to be going through them in a moment, okay? So I am going to work in my book. You're gonna work in your book. When the timer comes back, you're gonna look back at the Zoom, okay? Oh, and the scale on this graph, each one of these lines is worth 0 0.2, by the way, okay? Okay, we're taking 30 more working seconds. Jada. Okay, here we go. Oh, wow, that was weird. <laughs> okay, so everybody flip back to your Zoom screen, have your book next to you so that you can keep working in it as I'm talking, okay? So first thing that I did was I looked at both of my equations and I plotted my y-intercepts. 
So I plotted Jada's here. And I plotted Hans up top here at 4.8 and 0.6. Does everyone see how I did that? Okay. So then I needed to find a point on each of these lines. And I have some decimals here. So I don't really want to plug these decimals in and like solve for those values because like that's just like too much extra work. So what I did was for each of these, I plugged one in for X and I solved it for what my Y would be. So I plugged one in and I would get 3.2 X plus that 0.6 for Jada. So that 3.2 plus that 0.6 Y intersect to get a Y value of 3.8. So for Jada, I went, I went over to one and then I went up to 3.8 and I put a point. Then, because I know that I can create a line using two points, I'm taking my ruler and I'm connecting my Y intercept for Jada to that point that I plotted. Does everyone see how and why I did that? Okay, good. Let me grab my pencil and let me connect those points. Okay, so then I did the same thing for Han. I had his Y intercept here. Then I solved and I plugged one in for X and solved, I would get negative 2.4 plus 4.8 is equal to Y. 2.4 is equal to Y. So with my point here, I went over to one, up to 2.4 and I put a point. Then I know because I have two points, I can connect them to create my equation line. When I do that, my equation line would look like this on here. What do you notice looking at my graph and your fixed graph? What do you notice anything about this graph right here? Throw it in the chat, people. Nope, none of the, neither of these are proportional because neither of these go through zero, zero. Good guess though. What else do we notice? What do we like, what do we notice right here? There is an intersection point, very good. Number three asks us to find the point where the two graphs intersect with each other. What is that coordinate point? So in that chat right now, I want you to write the coordinate X comma Y over comma up to get where that intersection point is. Please put coordinate, put, put um, um, parentheses around your answers. Aiden, I want you to take another shot and take a look at my scale here. You cannot just count the boxes. You need to look at the scale. It's not going to be 0 0.73, 0 0.75. Very good. So if you go over, it's going to be over 0.75. Okay. If you go up, it stops at this three. So it is 0.75 comma three. Okay. So that's what this intersection point is. Uh, 0.75 comma three. Okay. So what does this coordinate mean in this situation? After 0.75 what? If you look at your scale, 0.75 stands for what? Very good, Aiden. Get a couple more people put it in the chat. What does that 0.75 stand for? Julia, look back at the um yes, Haley, exactly. Um it is over, yes, Eric, but you need to look at the title here. So 0.75 time, 0.75 an, of an hour after. 0.75 of an hour. 
And how much time is 0.75 of an hour? Three quarters of an hour. How many minutes? Yes, nice job, Dillo. 0.75 or 45 minutes. They will do what? So after 45 minutes, they will meet. But what does that three represent? They will meet at... They will meet three what? At the three mile point, not three o'clock, at the three miles away from the what? Away from where? They will meet three miles away from the parking lot, yes. It's not the pond. You need to look at the, the label here. It says distance from the parking lot. So it is three miles away from the parking lot. Does everyone see why we're saying the parking lot and not the lake? If it, if it was, if this label here said distance from the lake, then you could say they met three miles away from the lake. But because it says on this scale here, the parking lot, you need to say after 70, after 0.75 of an hour or 45 minutes, they will meet three miles away from the parking lot. So there's three important pieces here. You're talking about with this 0.75, you're saying that they will meet and then you're talking about what this three represents, okay? So if you didn't have that written down, make sure you get that written down. And we are going to finish here for the day, okay? So let me pull up. I just need one more minute of your time. I know I'm too over, but I'm going to take five of your time. And then we will be done for the day, okay? Well, at least with me, you'll be done for the day. So let me close out of this right here and we pull back up the slideshow so that I can just go through this last little bit together. Okay. So what you need to do on slide number 12, every single person needs to take a picture of their graph and insert it here. So you can use your camera on your um, on your Chromebook, you can use your phone to take a picture, but on this slide right here, you need to insert a picture of your graph. Does everyone understand? Okay, and then you have your second piece of this activity. Like I said, on slide number 16, you are given a link to watch the video to go through the second half. This is new learning. So you need to do this activity. Even if you feel like you understood what we did in class today, this is a completely different activity. So it needs to get done. You need to watch the video as I go through it because I'm giving you the answers. Like we're going through the answers together like we do in class. If you go through and just do these slides or just do this activity in the book, there's a pretty good possibility that you're not gonna do it correctly. So do it along with me in the video, get it done and be an expert at it and have the correct answers. Does everyone see what I'm saying? Because it's really, really, really important that you're learning it right, not just doing it. So then the homework for this evening, you have 30 minutes of Alex time on my path. So you're doing this last activity here on slide 16, and you're doing your 30 minutes of Alex time. If you have questions for me, please, um, you can stay behind and we can chat. If you don't have any other questions, please make sure all of this gets done. And I think you're gonna like my secret code phrase that I put in, oh yes, you can use a pen. Um, I think you're gonna love my secret code phrase that I put in the video today. It's pretty cute and I love it. Um, you guys can head out. Um, I will see you all tomorrow, okay? If you have questions, you can throw them in the chat. Bye, Eric. Bye, Jessica. Kaden, stay for a second for me. Caleb, can you stay for a second with me too? 
Yeah, what? Hi. So, um, you were.